What do you need to know when putting together a do not playlist for your wedding reception? Well, in this case, it really is the size that matters. As you're talking with your DJ or band for your wedding reception, the idea of a do not playlist is going to come up at some point. And in the simplest terms possible, all a do not playlist means is exactly that. It's a list of either bands or artists that the couple don't want played during their wedding reception. Now, there can be a plethora of reasons that a couple might put a song or artist on their do not playlist. Like for one, maybe they just don't like that song or artist. Maybe it's a popular song that they just don't get or just really don't want to hear on the dance floor or an artist that they just really have never gotten into. I've had couples put songs or artists on the do not playlist because it's offensive. Like, obviously, they don't want to hear WAP by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion at their wedding reception if there's going to be kids there. I've had couples who are maybe a little bit older and just don't want to hear a lot of new music on the dance floor because them and their guests aren't familiar with the brand new stuff on the radio. I've even had couples put artists on the do not playlist because they disagree with them politically or religiously. But whatever the reason they're on the list, a do not playlist is just a list of songs the couple doesn't want to hear. If you're watching this and thinking to yourself, Huh, I can't really think of, a, of an artist or a song that I want to put on a do not playlist for my wedding. That can actually be a really good thing. And here's why. If I'm working with a couple and their do not playlist has, you know, all the popular artists on there that you would hear at a wedding reception, Bruno Mars, Bon Jovi, Michael Jackson, Journey, Cardi B, Katy Perry, Kesha, Pitbull, I can go on and on and on. But if that's what their do not playlist looks like, it tells me a couple of things. One, this couple is really picky about their music, so it's gonna take some work and that's okay. Two, if I really do abide by that do not playlist, I'm gonna have a hard time rocking that dance floor at the wedding reception. Now this is the part where other DJs are gonna chime in and say something like, oh well, if you can't rock a wedding with the do not playlist, then maybe you shouldn't be a DJ and you're not very good and you suck. Blech. Okay, other DJ, that's really cool, and you are so edgy. But for me, when I'm at a wedding reception, my job is to make sure the bride and groom have a really good time. And the best way to do that is to make sure all the guests also have a really good time. And that's going to be really hard for any DJ to do if you chop their legs off before the music even starts and they're not allowed to play really any popular dance music. As always, there are exceptions to the rule. Let's say you and your partner at your wedding reception, it's going to be 50 of your closest friends. And then entire group of friends... Everyone's at EDM. You love dance music. That's what you like. That's what all your friends like. And that's all you want to hear at your wedding reception. I think that's totally okay. And actually a really cool idea, but you want to be sure you find a DJ or, you know, depending on the case, a band that can pull off that genre and a playlist like that for a couple of hours at your wedding reception. Or if you and your partner are like me and huge metal heads and all your friends are rockers and that's all you want to hear at your wedding reception, totally cool. But again, just make sure you find a DJ or a band that can pull off your eclectic music tastes at your wedding. And sometimes your DJ or band has to be willing to walk away if it's not in their wheelhouse. Now, I've actually had to turn couples away if they've given me like a really long do not playlist and I look at the list and go, oh boy, these are all like the songs I would normally play at a wedding. I'm not going to be a good fit for this. So I'm just up front and I'll tell the couple, this isn't really what I do, but I'll help you find someone else who can better perform for you. So you've got to be careful as the person hiring a DJ or a band. If you give them some long do not playlist, which again, in most cases, I don't recommend. But if you do and they look at it and go, oh yeah, no problem. That's a little suspicious. Because I don't care if you've been DJing in five years or 50 years. Not everybody is an expert at every genre, no matter what a DJ tells you. Just make sure if you have a longer, more specific do not playlist, you get really, really detailed with your DJ or band about what you want. To sum it up, if there's an artist or a couple of songs off the top of your head that you know you don't want to hear at your wedding reception, just let your band or DJ know. Put them on the do not playlist. But don't spend too much time trying to fill up that list with songs and artists just to have a do not playlist. It's really not necessary. On next week's episode, we're going to talk about if you should or shouldn't do the garter removal and garter toss during your wedding reception. In short, no, you shouldn't. It's gross. But there are a couple of exceptions, and we'll talk about that next week. Because planning your wedding can be a lot, but you don't want to get stuck on those little details. Just cut the f***ing cake.